Welcome to the program DPR, the Petroleum Industry Regulator. Our topic today has to do with the newest technology in human history, the ICT, simply known as Information and Communication Technology. Now, the Department of Petroleum Resources adaptation of this technology has tremendously improved their monitoring and inspection of the oil and gas industry. Today, Every molecule of crude oil and gas produced in Nigeria is virtually accounted for. Well, if you want to know how, you stay tuned to the program, Fest the Tidbits and the World of Oil and Gas. I'm Suleiman Aled. Welcome to the program. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, said that the present administration is unequivocally committed to the passage of the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, PIGB as the administration is working closely with the National Assembly to ensure the bill's passage. The Vice President, who was represented by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Emmanuel Ibekachiku, made a comment in Lagos at the 18th Biennial International Department of Petroleum Resources Health, Safety and Environment Conference. The Vice President said while there have been varied reactions to Mr. President's recent decision to return the bill to the National Assembly for slight amendment, the Buhari administration is committed to its passage. The reforms proposed in PIG reflects our collective desire to entrench transparency and sustainability of oil and gas operations in Nigeria to enable the country finally to realize the full potential of the hydrocarbon resources. Professor Shibajo also said that resolving the security challenges in the Niger Delta remains paramount to this administration as it seeks to create a peaceful business climate that will attract investors that will also bring massive development to the oil producing communities. While the government is fully sensitive to the genuine agitations of the host communities for greater participation in and control of our gas resources, oil and gas resources, the law and other elements to the problem has to be tackled head on to allow for peaceful business environment. Vice President Toshibajo seized the opportunity of the gathering of environmental experts to announce the commencement of the cleanup of impacted oil spill sites in the Niger Delta. He also launched a new edition of the environmental guidelines and standards for the petroleum industry. The Department of Petroleum Resources has taken another giant leap for the launch of its value monitoring and benchmarking fiscal payment administration system digital platform, as well as the 2017 Noge report. At the launch, which took place in Lagos, southwest of Nigeria recently, the director of DPR, Mr. Mordecai Ladan, represented by the head upstream sector DPR, Mrs. Pat Massey, expressed delight that DPR is operating actively on a digital platform, which is the new normal. Now, she said the VMB as a digital platform would be of immense benefits to DPR and the nation at large. Mrs. Funke Odunuga, who retired as DPR head of planning on the day of the launch, stated that the objectives of VMB include promoting transparency and predictability through cost evaluation, benchmarking of assets development and operations data. She added that the Fiscal Payment Administration, FISPAS, will equally make payment much easier and faster while Noge is designed to enhance the ease of doing business index. The event was attended by DPR staff, stakeholders in the oil and gas industry, as well as members of the public. This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Do not keep petrol in cherry cans inside your rooms. Ensure that it is kept well outside the living environment and away from children. Avoid using your cell phone in petrol filling stations during refueling of your car. It can cause spark and ignite fire. Do not smoke or use naked light where petrol is being stored or sold. Turn off your car engine at filling station when buying fuel in your tank. Avoid filling your generating set with petrol when the engine is still running. Always ensure that the the engine is switched off. Ensure that when pouring petrol into a container, it is done in a ventilated area and in safe manner. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng. Since the introduction of information technology, IT and information communications technology, ICT, the way business is done around the world 
It has not only been improved, it has made communication easier, turning the world into a global village. In the Department of Petroleum Resources, the adaptation of these technologies has made the running of the department very efficient, bringing in transparency in the monitoring and regulation of Nigeria's oil and gas industry. In this special report, we present the adaptation and deployment of the technology in the Department of Petroleum Resources. Information Communications Technologies, ICT, refers to technologies that provide access to information through telecommunications. It is similar to Information Technology, IT, but focuses primarily on communication technologies. ICT include Internet, wireless networks, cell phones, and other comm stands for information and communication technologies. In the past decades, information and communication technologies provided societies with a vast array of new communication capacities. Initially, it was radio and television, and then came real-time communications between people of different countries using technologies such as instant messaging, voice over IP, better known as VoIP, and video conferencing. These are followed by social media networking websites like Facebook, which allows users from all over the world remain in contact and communicate on a regular basis. Modern information and communication technologies have created a global village in which people can communicate with one another across the world as if they are living next door. The term ICT is also used to refer to convergence of audiovisual and telephone networks with computer networks through a single cabling or link system. It is economic and cost-saving. In the past, most of the operations and processes in the Department of Petroleum Resources were manual. Staff worked long hours writing out licenses for approved assets and operations and then presented for signature. This enormous task of being the oil and gas industry regulator in Nigeria and the need to share corporate information with stakeholders within and outside the organization required efficient and effective information system and DPR could not afford to be found wanting. Mrs. Pat Maselli, Deputy Director and Head, Upstream, Department of Petroleum Resources, shares this experience at an event. In the past, when we used to get into the vehicle and move from one company to other, collecting production data, and then we had only the IOCs and a few indigenous companies, which just like maybe four or five. But now we have 45 or 46 producing oil companies. How are you going to be moving your, your car to be collecting production data? But these days, by 8 a.m., all production data of the previous day is on. They are on my handheld phone. And I can tell, you know, I can see graphically what, how we are doing in, in relation to um, the capacity that, that we have. So we, we, are, we are already in this uh, paradigm shift. Due to the importance attached to information in the oil and gas industry, a unit was created in the Department of Petroleum Resources to oversee the running of information and communication technologies. It is called the ICT branch, an affiliate or branch of the Engineering and Standards Division of the department. The responsibilities of the ICT branch are enormous. It oversees the development and deployment of new e-solutions to drive and support the digitization of the Department of Petroleum Resources processes and improve interaction with stakeholders. For instance, the Central Electronic Licensing and Permitting System is designed to automate the process for all permits and licenses issued by DPR. Others include Oil and Gas Industry Service Permit OGISP online portal, the Coastal Vessel License CVL online portal, and 
the Depo and Lube Blending Application Online Portal. Other e-solutions deployed by the ICT branch include the National Production Monitoring System, NPMS, Smart Inspector Online Inspections Reporting Solution, and the Digitized Budget Administration Solution, DBAS. The ICT branch also administers, maintains, and supports DPR networks, LAN and WAN domain and servers, database and video conferencing solution. In addition, it ensures standardization and network security, drives change management process to ensure seamless integration of new solutions into the department's day-to-day -day activities. Finally, the ICT branch generates revenue for the government through licenses, permits, sanctions, and processing fees. Against these backdrops, the deployment of ICT, which started in the early 1980s, has significantly impacted on the organization's performance and service delivery as evidenced by the provisions of these benefits. Improved turnaround time for processing approvals, permits and licenses, availability of up-to-date information for investors and the public, enhanced monitoring of upstream and downstream activities in the oil and gas industry in effective and efficient manner. We've gone beyond the data submission now, so we have gone into real time. So what we mean by real time is that rather than our staff or the operator feeding in the data from their system coming into us via internet, we've gone to real time. Real time means that we are collecting those data directly from system, from the control center of those companies. So this is displaying our real time dashboard now. You can see this is Bunga. This is Bunga. This is displaying Bunga right now. Bunga FPSO. The, 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 the system is bringing in the data directly. You can see their export meter showing zero. That means that they didn't export anything. The next export meter, is the totalizer is there. So we can see each of those terminal bringing in the data directly. It has also enhanced staff performance through the deployment and usage of ICT tools. Other areas of improvement brought to DPR through the deployment of ICT include the increased knowledge sharing and work collaboration among DPR staff, production accounting optimization and efficient revenue generation. I hand you over to my colleague Antonia Amuzu, who in an interview with the Assistant Director and Head of ICT Branch in the Department of Petroleum Resources, Mr. Lutman Ayokadoso, sought to know more on the operations of the branch. Today we will be talking with Mr. Ayonride Cardozo, who is the Assistant Director of ICT in the Dep Department of Petroleum Resources. Mr. Caduzzo, you're welcome to this segment of the program. Thank you for having me. Okay. We just want to find out from you, when we talk of ICT, we know DPR has been a very deregulator in the oil industry, and the oil industry is a highly, uh, um, uh, what would you say, uh, ICT, and what a view that you, for you to operate. How is ICT in DPR like? Okay, let me start from the beginning. Well, uh, in the past, um, most of our operations are basically manual, manual processes. For you to get uh, one form of permit or the other, you have to go through manual processes. But as a DPR today, we've deployed RCT in order to enhance our capability to perform those functions. And um, most of what we have been able to achieve through the development of uh, ICT is that we've improved turnaround maintenance for processing of uh, approval and permits. Uh, availability of up-to-date information for investors and public, and enhancement of monitoring of upstream and downstream activities in the oil and gas sector, and uh, in, a, in an effective and efficient manner. Uh, we also enhance uh, staff uh, capability through uh, development and usage of ICT tools. We've increased uh, knowledge sharing and uh, work uh, collaboration among the staff of the department also, we've been able to do production accounting optimization um, and also efficient revenue generation through the ICT. 
You said in the past you used to be, you were not too ICT driven. How recently did ICT come into DPR? Uh, I would say in the early 80s. Oh, okay. And it, but we keep on uh, updating our process. So, so as the hardware head of the ICT unit in DPR, what do you really do? Okay, my key role and responsibility is to accelerate uh, digitalization, just as you asked. You know, ICT has always been around, but now a lot of innovation are around as well. So we need to enhance uh, digital processes. We also need to enhance uh, communication. We are spread all over the Federation. So we need to enhance our communication within our offices. And also, as I mentioned earlier, all these things that you generate via ICT on one form or the other, you are bound to have data lying everywhere. So we also want to consolidate uh, those data in one, in one place so that we can make um, uh, better use of it. So, so that is my primary function. How challenging or how easy is it for you to be able to achieve all what you have enumerated using your ICT? Uh, well, uh, most the critical challenge is um, acceptance and uh, adoption by people. You know, technology are there, they are bound, but be, people are selective. So, uh, but at, a, at an enterprise level, you know, most of the technology will bring in and bring in disruption of services. So people tend to be slow in accepting it and adopting it. You know, when you so say that, people, who are you talking about now? I'm talking in terms of staff in-house. So initially, acceptability of the whole uh, digitalization was kind of slow. But now we've marked on the acceptance and um, adoption of various uh, initiatives that we've got on board. So those are the major challenges. And because we have uh, management support, so they are driving the uh, digitalization process from the top. So it makes those uh, acceptance to be something that we can handle. But outside that, uh, every other thing is like the work uh, challenges as well. So what, what, what would you say with the deployment of ICT your unit has been able to achieve for DPL? and then in terms of your regulatory functions in the oil and gas industry? Okay, we've been able to achieve uh, quite a lot. I can put it in three perspectives, in terms of the upstream and in terms of downstream and as well as the staff as well. So in terms of upstream, we have a system that we call National Production Monitoring System. This allows us to monitor our uh, production system. So we do it online. So we get our report via online system, and it, it gets to DPR in the uh, data form in our uh, data center. I'm going to explain a bit about it. You can see it as the background. So the, the MPMS allows us to kind of get um, those production figures from the operators, right from their offices. We get all those activities they are doing in terms of production, it gets down to us. Also at our terminal as well, we have our own men. Terminal means that we have, we have the crude oil, lifting. So we also get data from those ones from our staff to send it down to us. So all those ones is being facilitated by a system we call National Production Monetary System. It's a, it's a system that has been in place since 2009 and it's something that has been uh, have improved that particular function in DPR. Future plan is to be able to monitor uh, crude oil from uh, wellhead to the final desti destination. The Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources is uh, very keen on this. He wants us to be able to track the, the crude from the wellhead down to the final destination. So based on that, uh, we are subscribing to uh, a service. It's not new, it's already existing. The banks and uh, abroad, they use it for financial purposes to track cargoes and everything. So they track all manners of cargoes. But we are interested in uh, tracking crude oil and gas. So we are subscribing to it. So it is technology we hope to adopt this year if we have um, budget uh, approval. For the downstream sector, all the processes of getting approval in the past is all manual. You know, but we've been able to do a, a, um, a solution we call the automated downstream system that kind of uh, put all the permitting issue and approval online. People can just apply for their permit and all that and they get they get processed and it has improved the turnaround of the kind of licenses that we're able to process one, one way or the other. So that has also improved uh, generation of uh, fund to the to the system. 
Also, in terms of staff for upstream and downstream, then in terms of staff uh, work uh, productivity tools, we did uh, we went we invested massively in, in, into cloud computing, which allows our people to be able to work anywhere. So we have what we call the uh, collaborative suit, which allows our staff to work. We are in the cloud. We have uh, Microsoft Azure. We have uh, enterprise mobility suit that makes sure that wherever you are working, you have security around what you are doing. In reality, because quite often we hear a lot of this thing, when you want to do passport, when you want to do this, they tell you you don't need to come to our office, you have to do everything online. But in reality, sometimes these things do, really don't work out that way. Are you telling us that yours work as it should? Yes, madam. If you log on to our website today and you want to apply for permits, you will see that you can apply for it online. And once your, the documents are intact, under 72 hours, you get your permit. You and you don't need to come. We have the, the FSI is a paper permit. All we need to do is that once we grab the permit, your permit will have a, a, a serial number that makes it authentic. Even the people that want to use that permit, they don't need the paper. They also have access to the portal. They can log on and put your serial number there. And once they confirm that the permit is okay. So you don't need to really visit us. And you pay all the doc, uh, payment online. So we, have, we also have what we call a smart inspector for our staff that we do a lot of surveillance inspection. So people go out and when they come back, they come back and write their report for their bosses. But we have a, a solution that is a, a phone app that we call smart inspector. Once you get to, your, to, the, to the place you want to inspect, you carry out your inspection activities. All you need to do is to write your report on the spot. And as you are posting your report with the geo coordinate, it gets to your boss on the table. It can see what you have done and it can act on it before you come back to the office. And if it needs for you to do for that, then it can alert you based on the report you have sent right from the field. So we call that smart inspector. We've I've mentioned uh, the issue of teleconferencing that we've done. And uh, also we are now we, we are we are bombarded every day with visitors and all that. Now we want we have been able to digitalize uh, the way our visitor comes in. We have what we call um, I visit so that we can capture as our visitors are coming in and to know where, which floor and where they are going. And it's not only in Lagos, all over the Federation. And this is synchronized on the cloud. We can know the number of people that come to head office today. We can know how many people visited the cardinal office. So this is, these are just pooling data as well that we can use in future. So then also, we are also improve on our website. Our website is, uh, is very dynamic and is a landing page for mo most of the activities that we are doing. If you want to apply for one form of permit or the other, you need to go to the website. So we made the website to be very dynamic and very interactive to people. Would you say, or do you still have more to, say, to, to talk about before I go to the next question? Okay, uh, well, there are not much anyway. I, I just want to mention that we are also TSA compliant. We are one of the very few people that went compliant when the federal government said all your payments must go through um, TSA platform. I want to find from the feedback you get from those you are interfacing with, would you say your ICT is where it should be or there is still room for improvement? Yes, we still have room for improvement in the sense that, um, just as you mentioned, if I say if you apply for permits right now, you need to get it under 72 hours. That is the ideal. So I cannot say 100% of those applications come as 100%. But in terms of uh, achievement, we have been getting a lot of commendation from people. That shows that we are doing very well. Also, in terms of investment that we've made in ICT, I said that we have challenges in adoption. So people are slow in adopting. So those are kind of things that I cannot say. I can say that we have not really measured up the way we are set out to be. But I know that eventually we will come around and achieve the set plan. If you were, would you say that um, they, are there, have you covered all areas of operation of DPR using ICT, or there are still some areas you still hope to expand into? Well, there are areas that uh, you, we need to expand into. You know, in um, digitalization, you focus more on uh, infrastructure. You also look at business uh, process operation. But as you are growing in that uh, digitalization, other things will be coming up that you need to focus on that you will not. They were not part of what you set out to do. So I will not say we've covered everything. But in terms of infrastructure, to do what we need, I think we've done considerably well in terms of that, that line. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Cardozo. You have really explained to us 
what you do in the ICT department. And I'm sure that must be the heart of DPL for you it's to be able to do your regulatory functions. Yeah, effectively. thank you, man. ICT is not only the heart of DPL, but it's heart of all enterprise now. Okay. You need to be ICT compliant. For yeah. you to survive in the for world of today. For you to compete effectively. effectively. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Yes, well, thank, you. Well, thank you for okay. having me. It's a wrap on today's edition of the program. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do not fail to join me next week for another well-researched topic and the happenings in the nation's oil and gas regulatory agency. From me and my team, it's goodbye.